This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Social and environmental auditing is becoming more important, partly because stakeholders have become more interested in the environmental impact or social impact of businesses, uh, but also because there are more laws and regulations governing how businesses perform in these respects, uh, and they may require the uh, client uh, to prepare reports, uh, and these reports will be uh, uh, more believable uh, if there's some sort of uh, audit that's been performed and some sort of uh, audit report which has been signed off. Uh, also, if the client is kind of boasting its environmental cred credentials in its uh, corporate report, uh, this will hold more credibility with the stakeholders or shareholders uh, using or reading the corporate report uh, if there is some sort of uh, auditor's report uh, kind of verifying that the figures are okay. Environmental and uh, social issues, these are a source of risk. If you fall foul of these, uh, you are likely to cause uh, considerable reputational damage, bad publicity. There may, may be fines uh, from the regulatory uh, authorities. There may be compensation uh, to pay uh, if you, say, release uh, effluent into a river and it kills a fish uh, and so on. Uh, and there may be uh, even in some uh, uh, areas lead to disqualification of directors if they're found to be acting you know, rashly and carelessly and, and so on. Part of corporate governance is that uh, management must, of course, uh, deal with the risk and they must manage the risk and kind of control the risk uh, there. Uh, and part of that will be uh, understanding what the various stakeholders want. So uh, what do the uh, people looking after the environment want, which could, of course, be the government? Uh, what do the people living near your factory want in terms of the release of uh, uh, fumes, or the noise, uh, and the, the like? Uh, what do the people employed in the town want uh, with regard to your employment uh, policies? Uh, so, so one way or another, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, perhaps, uh, if the company just makes up its own uh, uh, performance indicators uh, without finding out what uh, various stakeholders might be interested in. And, and of course, in, in particular, maybe the stakeholders who are the powerful ones, which are going to be the, the regulatory authorities who can, of course, enforce a law uh, about your performance, uh, and uh, powerful customers, uh, people who have access to powerful publicity, uh, it, that they can use to your disadvantage uh, if you don't perform correctly. We have to measure performance and, as I say, you have to confer with the stakeholders uh, to see what they're interested in and then you have to try to develop KPIs, key performance indicators, which in some way match the areas of performance that you're going to be interested in. So sometimes it's going to be very simple and straightforward uh, they might be interested in knowing the uh, kind of ratio of males to females in your business. They might, and there's been a lot of controversy recently for, uh, uh, to do with the employment in the BBC, uh, about the average uh, salaries, if you like, of male employees and the average salaries of uh, female employees. And you can have two presenters on the same news program uh, with very disparate uh, salaries. Uh, and there has been a a source of considerable embarrassment uh, to the BBC, uh, which kind of prides itself on being a, a righteous and liberal organisation. Targets may be set, uh, there may be limits set, there may be legal limits might be the target. Uh, we have to measure performance, we compare to the target, and we can draw conclusions about uh, how we're doing and maybe whether we're improving in our chances of reaching those targets or not. Social audit. Social audit looks at very often employment. Uh, it, it will look at uh, maybe the, uh, you know, in some way how we maybe treat people uh, abroad uh, in areas, kind of low cost areas and so on. Uh, what sort of conditions of work 
uh, are, are they laboring in? Uh, do we employ any children, you know, under the age of 14 or 12 or whatever we're, uh, we're going to be setting there? Are we offering equal opportunities to male, female and the like? Uh, what is our rate of uh, industrial injuries uh, or industrial related diseases amongst our employees? Uh, all of these are, are uh, you know, um, areas which any employee would be interested in. Uh, but often uh, customers are going to be interested in this as well. They uh, want to buy from what they believe to be an ethical company. And uh, the social behavior of companies is, is feeding into the, the ethical profile of the, of the, of the company. Environmental audit to safeguard the environment, uh, to comply with uh, the company's own policies and targets, but also to comply with externally, uh, uh, uh imposed targets, uh, and, and also to maybe demonstrate that you're doing better than maybe your competitors are doing. So it could be environmental impact assessments, uh, you're opening a new factory, the uh, European Union, if you're doing that, they want an environmental impact. They want to see the effect that's going to have maybe on wildlife in the area, on air pollution, on noise, on uh, traffic, dust and so on, uh, before you might be allowed to open uh, factories in certain areas. Uh, an eco-audit, Eco audit how uh, good we are with our greenhouse gases, our recycling, uh, whether our carbon footprint is going down, what percentage of renewable energy are we using, uh, as, as opposed to maybe oil-based products uh, which release greenhouse gases. Uh, supplier audits, uh, uh, how good are our suppliers at looking after their staff? It's all very well saying that we have very low incidence of industrial accidents and diseases, but if we simply outsourced all of that to somewhere else, all the, the, the dirty and dangerous manufacturing is going somewhere else, uh, then we're not really, not really playing a, you know, a, a straight game with, with that. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, kind of smoke and mirrors that we have actually improved, uh, our, um, uh, relationship uh, with uh, staff or our treatment of staff who are somewhere in the supply chain. Similarly, environmental quality management. Uh, there are kind of ways around that that companies think. Again, uh, some companies, it is rumoured, have moved their production facilities abroad. Okay, they get maybe cheap labour and so on, but what else they get is maybe lower overheads lower difficulties with making sure that they clean up water before it's released into the river they they reduce the amount of gases which are released into the atmosphere they reduce the noise they reduce the pollution and so on they go to a country where that is maybe not well controlled again uh, enabling them to say that maybe within their home company uh, country that they have improved we have to agree metrics, in other words, what we're going to measure and how we're going to measure it. Uh, we have to measure the performance and then we have to basically report compliance or, or report on the results that have been uh, brought together, collated, uh, which is going to be used to, to display the performance. Difficulties that arise. First of all, like uh, what we've been looking at and uh, Forensic audits will be looking at in the audit of prospective financial information. Uh, the audit of social and environmental factors is non-standard. Uh, different companies will want you to measure different things. Uh, there may be different ways of measuring these things. There is not a, a kind of a, a international standard of auditing that is a, being applied to the measurement of greenhouse gases for example. Therefore, we need very careful agreement in advance. What we're going to be doing, how you're going to measure it. And if we uh, thought that uh, the way the company was maybe proposing to measure something, and uh, we thought, well, that's, that's maybe not being honest, uh, again, uh, our integrity should be coming into to play here. Integrity is not just to do with financial matters. It is to do with 
uh, you know, all the work we're doing uh, uh, and all the auditing we're doing. The measurements are not standardized. So this makes a uh, difficulty, uh, if you like, if we're comparing what we're doing, uh, maybe to what the law has said, or we're comparing what we're doing to what a competitor is doing. Uh, we want to look better to compare to the competitor, uh, but if the methods are not standardized, we simply adopt a method of measurement which is more lenient. Or if we want to show improvement from one year to the next, and we change the method of measurement, in other words, it's a bit like changing accounting policy. There's an inconsistency uh, in in that. Uh, then again, we're going to manipulate the results. And there isn't uh, you know, an accounting standard uh, which is saying uh, maybe how you report a difference in the way of measuring the release of carbon dioxide. We need to understand and look at how clients make measurements. We need to be uh, happy that it's relatively sound. Uh, if all the client is doing is, is making occasional random uh, samples of water going from the, their outlet drains, even like into the river, uh, then I think we should be worried about that. Because all it might mean is they release all the nasty stuff at night uh, and all the relatively clean stuff during the day. Uh, and, and there was a a really surprising uh, case uh, of a very uh, large uh, uh, cruise company uh, and what the cruise company is supposed to do uh, all the waste all the sewage is supposed to be uh, go into tanks within the cruise ship and then when they go into port they pump it into a proper uh, sewage and waste management system uh, what this cruise company was discovered to be doing, it had what they call a kind of secret pipe. Uh, and when the cruise company was outside territorial waters, it opened a valve in this pipe and discharged all this uh, filthy water uh, into the sea. Uh, and that was discovered by a whistleblower uh, who reported the uh, company, which of course suffered uh, you know, considerable bad publicity, and I think considerable fines and uh, regulatory involvement and so on uh, to stop her doing it. But it's kind of surprising. It was a, it's a very large international company. It supplies these kind of luxury holidays and really large boats. And it was deliberately cheating the system to save money. So if you were asked to, you know, uh, be the auditor of this cruise liner, uh, you get a nice, a nice cruise, which might be interfering, of course, with your self-interest, their gifts and hospitalities and so on, uh, but you are, uh, you know, charged with trying to, to, to measure how well the, uh, the cruise company is living up to its environmental responsibilities, would you have discovered that or not? Uh, and difficult. The auditor might not have, even if it's not being, uh, what was fraud like that, even if it's not being deliberately covered up, do we have sufficient expertise? Uh, I mean, we, we have, you know, lots of training in financial stuff, but does that equip us to, to measure the tons of carbon dioxide being released? Or the concentration uh, of poisons being released into a river? Uh, or to measure and know what decibels mean, you know, the, the noise that's coming from uh, the factory? And in many cases, we won't. Some of the larger firms of auditors might be developing specialist uh, departments who have got a range of scientists and engineers who are uh, you know, trained to do this and have the right equipment to do it. But an ordinary auditor in a smallish company will have no clue how to do it. And they should really realize that they're out of their depth uh, and they should bring in, either refuse the work or they should... Uh, bring in a third-party expert with all the implications of making sure this person is uh, qualified, has he experienced, uh, is independent, is professional and so on, uh, and therefore we can place some reliance on uh, the reports they're giving. In respect of this uh, subject, uh, again on our website there is a worked uh, exam question uh, again from December 2010, uh, called Newman. 
And it's interesting to see just the way the question was worded and the, the sort of uh, points that were brought out in the answer.